Turn up your radio. It's time for DeLorean Talk with your host, Dave Tavers. All right. Thanks again for tuning in to DeLorean Talk. This is Dave Tavers, VIN 10515 from Southern California. I know I always say thank you to everybody when I start these out, but I really appreciate all the support and the fact that people enjoy the show. As always, if you have questions you want me to start asking or things that I've been neglecting, speak up, send me a message. I'll add it to my list of questions so that I don't forget. If you haven't checked out DeLoreanDirectory.com, go check it out. Lots of information. Be sure to check out the DeLorean Census. See if your VIN is listed. Maybe there's some information from a long time ago. If you want to share photos of your car, this is a great place to do it. And it kind of uh, helps the community figure out where the cars are around the world. Today's guest is uh, someone that I actually have never, well, I talked to for about two minutes a few months back because uh, I have an odd connection. The story itself is heartbreaking and interesting that I haven't even heard yet, but uh, what everybody knows is pretty crazy. And, and then I have a connection to it that I'll share in the middle. I'm happy to have Mike Persine with me. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining me. Hi, how's it going? So like I teased there, the story is that you are one of the f- very few people that have ever had their DeLorean stolen. But worse mm-hmm. is not only that, well, I guess technically you got it back, but there was basically nothing left. Uh, your car was found uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere, burnt to a crisp and mostly melted. So um, yep. <laughs> that's that's a story I know people want to hear. But if we can, before we jump into that, I want to know a little bit more about you and and why you got your DeLorean. You know, tell tell people where you're from, how long have you had your car, what's your VIN number, and a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. So uh, I originally found the car. It's kind of a crazy story. I was in the military. I was stationed in um, Tacoma, Washington, and a buddy of mine called me and left a voicemail saying there was a DeLorean for sale at this it's kind of interesting, like there's a little parking lot where soldiers can list their cars for sale and it's all like tracked by the military base. And he told me there's a car for like, there's a DeLorean for sale. You'll never believe it. And so I was 20 years old and went <laughs> down there and I was like, if this thing's a five speed, I have to figure out a way to buy it. Cause I've been a, uh, you know, DeLorean obsessed since I was a kid. My mom has like this thing I did in preschool where it was like, if there's one thing you need to know about Mike is that he likes DeLorean. Oh, wow. Like, like I was like a four year old. I had the little McDonald's back to the future toy. And my mom said I wouldn't even put it down to eat. <laughs> so I had been a DeLorean, like, uh, it's kind of the, you know, the okay. Buffalo, you know, the car I've always wanted. It's my dream car. And I, it was for sale. I couldn't believe it. Wow. The guy, uh, he was in the military too. And I told him, I was like, I'm going out to, for training for a month. Can you, is there any way you can just hold the car for me? And he's like, yeah, sure. Since you're in the military, I'll do that. He said he'd been getting offers from Germany. And so oh, wow. the car itself was, a uh, uh, October 81, uh, is five, nine, eight, four was the last four. Um, it was one of the rare birds that, uh, it had the power antenna, but it still had the separate clock and, you know, kind of the weird things that they were right in the middle of changing it towards the later, yeah, uh, model. You know, but it's and then it had the t- the the pull down built into the door. It wasn't just the loop uh, around the handle, and so right. it was kind of like this weird. Still had the, the early it had the early stereo, yeah, but the later antenna and <laughs> and door handles, all this stuff. So I was, I, as I learned about the car, it was pretty amazing. Um, when I bought it, it only had twelve thousand miles on it. Uh, Wow. It had had some speedometer issues, but uh, he gave me all of the – I had a huge b- uh, folder full of stuff, and you can track the mileage through. It was only a couple thousand off, if anything. Nice. You know, was, he the, was he the first owner, or, or how far off? No, so the, I have records back to about three owners before me, but I don't know if any – but before that. But um, I have records back to, like, you know, invoices and stuff back to, I think, like, 90 – five or something like that i think is the earliest one i have so yeah and uh so i uh, got the car when i was 20 i was still living in the barracks so i had the car in the barracks parking lot with <laughs> two and, car covers on it trying uh, to shield it from the washington rain right about what year was this this was 2008 when i bought the car oh, wait, 10 okay. years ago 10 years ago yeah 
Yeah, so had it then, and uh, really lucky. I didn't have too many issues with it. Uh, in 2011, I was rear-ended, oh. <laughs> but it was pretty nice. It was just a little bump, and all it did was it kind of ruined the the rear fascia, and like it it actually kind of put the muffler into the dr- uh, crank pulley. So I had all that work done at a uh, Delorean Northwest. Cool, you know, Toby. The guy who hit me. Cool. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I got to know Toby down there, and so the car was up there. I was I got out of the military in uh, the end of 2011, and so I moved it back to I moved to Reno, Nevada after that, and uh, kind of registered. And then I went ended up going to school in California, so I had it out there in uh, like the Sacramento area. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and, and I I don't know if there's a car show down there in uh, Dixon that's for all British cars, but they allow the DeLoreans and every year. We get about five or six of us go down there, and so I had actually won the show back in 2015. I took the gold in the DeLorean class, so wow. it was a really nice car. Like awesome. it was uh, all original. I, I just kind of fixed stuff as it broke. I, I definitely wanted to keep it original because I'm a DeLorean fan. I'm not yep. even like I'm not even. I wouldn't even call myself a Back to the Future fan because I used to watch that movie when I was a little kid, and I would fast forward <laughs> it to the parts with the car. Like, <laughs> I wanted to see the car, you know, like that was yep. my obsession. I'm the same so, way. I, I, yeah. I am a Back to the Future nut, but I want I love the look and design of the DeLorean, so I'm keeping it the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, that that was me. I was big on like originality, and I would try to get parts from that would be correct or at least close to correct, with the exception of like I did the LED lights so that when I was at oh, car yeah. shows the battery would die and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. But you know, little tweaks here and there, but nothing crazy like changing the wheels or the color. Or anything <laughs> right. That way. Right. So, yeah, I had the car. It was. That was where I was actually going the day it was taken. Was uh, I was going down to that car show in Dixon from Reno. I, I drove it over with my F two fifty, my Ford. So this was um, this was yeah. in uh, what month was that car show? That was May. So May May twenty eighteen uh, is yeah. when. Okay, so uh, trust me, I'm dying to hear the story and uh, and yeah. everything before, during, and after. But uh, yeah. I, I ask a lot of people because there is a lot of other things around the car in general, and your your story is heartbreaking and amazing, but mm-hmm. I, I want to get the history. So you had the car for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What did your – did your family uh, – it sounds like if you started in kindergarten that your fan, your mom, at least, was probably excited yeah. for you. What did the rest of your family think <laughs> when you bought the car? Uh, well, when I bought the car, I remember I was only 20 years old. Like, I'm 30 now, but I was 20 years old, like a private in the Army, like – <laughs> no business having like a classic right. retro sports car. Yeah. So a lot of people were like, "What? Like, what do you do?" <laughs> so it was really a shock. And then people would see it and they couldn't believe it. And then they'd see how nice it was. And then they'd kind of come around to what I was thinking is like, couldn't pass it up. Like I, I had to scratch. I borrowed money from my mom. Like took a big loan out. Like all this stuff to be able to get the car because I just I, I realized what it was and how what the condition of it was as it sat there. Yeah. And so. So people you know. came around. I imagine your mom was happy for you, wanting it since you were a little oh, kid. Yeah. yeah, she was just worried that I couldn't afford it. But I was like, well, I got this. <laughs> you know, 20-year-old kid. Yeah, yeah, and military, no less. It's not even a big yeah, job. Too. But good. I mean, yeah. you, you last, you, you made it through. I just talked to somebody the other day that also got one when he was uh, early 20s and mm-hmm. ultimately only had it like six months and then had to sell it because he couldn't afford the insurance. And But he was northeast mm-hmm. and he thought he was going to drive it year round so you know at least seattle oh. is just rain you know i lived in seattle for a long time we got rain mm-hmm. up there but not snow and ice and salt on the road so yeah you you'd only get that once or twice a year you might get some snow but yeah i, I ended up getting a when i started making a little bit more uh rank in the military I, I got my own apartment and i had a garage and i kept it garaged from there on out yeah. uh and when I would deploy, like I deployed to Iraq in 2010, I had it, I kept it at my mom's house in, in Davis, California. It was in the garage the entire time. And Good. So it was, it was garage. Taking care for, of. I mean, yeah, the only times I ever really had it out in the, the weather was when I first bought it because I, I didn't have the money to rent a garage or do anything sure. to put it in. Like, so I had to kind of keep it out in the elements. But yeah. I really was careful to make sure I had the, it came with the DeLorean fitted car cover and I had the waterproof one over that, and I really tried to make sure that it didn't get any water on it or snow or rain. 
Uh, hey, trust me, I'm I'm the same way, but it is a car. It won't melt. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah. And t- to each his own. I know there's people that, that, you know, if it's if it's not a perfectly clear day, they won't take it out. But I, yeah. I wanted to enjoy the car and get it out there and have fun with it. And uh, it's okay if it gets dirty and wet um, for me. And yeah. So I'm with well, you. And that's kind of the end of my story, I guess, is or like the moral of my story that I feel that I take away from this is I feel like I should have enjoyed the car a lot more than I did. Like oh. it was in a garage. And a lot of the times I'd have my – you know, daily driver parked in front of the garage where it was and it's a nice day and I should take it out, but <laughs> uh, I don't want to move the cars around. So I just wouldn't. And thinking back <laughs> on it, there's probably about, you know, 15 or 20,000 more miles. I probably should have put on that car by, you know, 10 years. Like I, I only put about, you know, 10,000 miles on the car in the 10 years I had it. So it was oh. like, well, you, yeah, you more. barely took it out. It. Wow. Yeah. Cause I just, like I said, it was in Washington, the weather was so bad all the time. And I always was kind of particular because, you know, it's got the open air vents to the engine and the exhaust, and I didn't want to have any corrosion problems. So if it was raining, I tried not to bring it out. Sure, sure. Just well, because of the engine, like with the open air, like vents, you know. So, so dear, when you were in the military up there, where, where were you based? Like what city were you based in? So it's uh, Fort Lewis was uh, it's now Joint Base lewis McCord. It's right there by Tacoma, like south yeah. of Tacoma, a couple miles. And so I was there. I mean, the Pacific Northwest DeLorean Club is, you know, one of the best clubs around in the world. Did you go up yeah. and get involved with them and do any shows or parades? Um, I think I signed, I, I was like, I signed up for the PNDC, um, but I think I, I, I don't really remember. That was such a long time ago. I don't think I did anything really with them. I I did keep in touch with the guy, uh, Toby, at uh, DeLorean, DeLorean Parts Northwest. Northwest yeah, because so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got the floor mats from him and, like, you know, kind of stuff. Uh, anytime I had parts, I'd call him and ask him if he had okay, it. So. Cool. Just curious. So, cause, I mean, you were in the military, I, I, so it's not like you had a normal. Yeah. I'm guessing you weren't a normal eight to five job. So yeah, you couldn't really yeah. be involved. But you know, I never know. You were in a great place. I think I went to a, maybe like one or two events, but I noticed a lot of them were up in Seattle, which for yeah. me was an hour and a half drive. And right. Yeah, I just didn't ever get around to you know three hour round trip to go to a little meet that right. I. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of always ended up like, eh. And that's kind of what happened to me in California when I was going to the college at Davis. All of the Northern California, the ND or NCDMC, the Northern California group, they did everything out in the Bay Area. And it would have been a four hour round trip, you know? And it's yeah. like, ugh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so I ended up kind of almost not being as active in the DeLorean community as I probably wish I was. Well, but. Not a, it's not a big deal. I'm just always curious. <laughs> yeah. and, and honestly, I really. I guess I say I harp on people when I meet them. I'm like, you got to come out to events. And, mm-hmm. and you know, people are like, oh, it's really far to drive. I'm like, you know, figure out something. Find another DeLorean in the area uh, because it is, yeah. as you know, it is fun when you get multiple DeLoreans together, whether it's because of the information you're sharing, learning, uh, or just people. One DeLorean is cool, but when you get two or more together, people kind of freak yeah. out, you know. Yeah, they don't know what's going on. And that was that uh that all British car show at Dixon. They they we would have, you know, seven of us out there and it kinda showstopper. Everybody yeah. was over at the DeLorean. And we're all parked in a row and we yeah. all got all the doors and it's just a huge ruckus. So I always looked forward to that one. It's just I I I hadn't gone for a couple of years and I was like, I'm gonna get back into this, I'm gonna start doing stuff again. Good. So I had driven my you know, I drove the I had I finally got my diesel truck so I could trailer it around and I trailered it over there and thought everything was nice. gonna be cool. But, yeah, so. <laughs> so before mm-hmm. the incident, mm-hmm. do you have any favorite memories? Any crazy stories? Anything that happened when you were when you had the DeLorean out? Yeah. So uh, there was a. I always remember I'd look over like on the freeway and somebody'd be driving with their knees trying to take a picture and it. <laughs> right. Ah, like, and I can remember feeling almost that the. the the social exhaustion of like having to talk to everybody. And I get home and be like, Oh my God. Like, uh, Cause I've been talking to people all day and I remember how like, you know, but then how good that felt like, Oh man, I love this car. Cause it's just, I love how much other people love it. Right. But one of the really big ones that I remember is I was driving around with my, you know, girlfriend at, you know, and, uh, we got, um, uh, we pulled into this AMP and we were just, you know, stopping for, food or whatever. I don't remember. <laughs> Literally this cop lit me up. I'm like, what is going on? And uh, he follows me into the gas station, pulls up right behind me, and I get out. All right, I he walks up to me and he's like, "Hey, man! Like, I'm just, I'm just hoping to get a picture." Like, <laughs> and, like literally, he pulled me over to take a picture of the car. 
And then he's like, and he, and I hopped out and I opened the doors and my girlfriend's laughing her butt off. And, uh, and I'm like, and he's like, can I like turn the lights on and like take a picture of it? Like, it looks like I pulled it over. I'm like, yeah, dude, go for it. Man. That's it was great. So, yeah, that was about three years ago. I, I hope you I have that picture. That, Do you have that photo? Uh, no, but I, my, my, uh, my, uh, girlfriend has the, she took a Snapchat of like the cop car and us and, She's like, oh, we got pulled over. Just kidding. You want to take a picture? I'm like, it's so funny. But no, I, I should have asked him for it, I guess. That is but I was awesome. just so, I was kind of in shock. Like, what happened? What right. Happened? What did I do? Why am I getting pulled over? Yeah. And oh, that is so and cool. He just, he just wanted to take a picture. And I was like, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Some of my best memories I have of the car is like, I'd wash it or, you know, detail it out before a car show. And I'd just sit there in a lawn chair with it out in the driveway and I just, you know, take it in. Like yeah. I just sit there with the doors open just sit out there. It's a, I remember one time pretty vividly, it was like kind of dusk and just had the doors open, just kind of looking at it. Like nice. I was pretty much in love with that car. Like I, I did the same thing uh, when I yeah. first got mine. I was the, the yeah. first week that I had it, it was not in a garage and it's parked out in mm-hmm. front of my apartment and I could, my car was parked right in front of my apartment. So I sat on mm-hmm. the front stoop just looking at the car, like I can't believe it's mine. Yeah, that I, I finally... can't believe that. Yeah, yeah, and, and I was I, that memory I was referencing was two years ago. I mean, it was. I mean, that was eight years into it. I still would just. I had to like take it in. Like, wow, what awesome. a car, you know. <laughs> so you, I know you said that you wanted to keep things original. Did you do any kind of updates or upgrades? Did you Did you do any work on the car yourself? Uh, yeah. Well, I did a, a couple of things on my own, but I, when the car was rented, they said, well, you have to replace the muffler and all this stuff. It's been bent up pretty bad. I was like, well, how much would it be to do the stage one? So they did the, uh, they basically put it on there for the difference. I paid the difference between what the factory one and a uh, stage yeah. one. So as you know, those are like 25. And at the time it was a $2,500 exhaust. This was yeah. 2011 and I got it for about 1200. So it was pretty neat, like half off. So yeah. Yeah. I got the, the whole set up there and, I actually changed the water pump a couple of years back myself. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. That engine's so goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I do a lot of car work on like, you know, I have a Mustang that I've kind of souped up. It's got a supercharger and stuff, but I'm a pretty car guy. Like I can fix anything. I feel like as long as I have the tools. And yeah. so I was doing the water pump. I couldn't believe how backwards. strange that engine is. Yeah. Kind of backwards. Like you have to take the whole thing apart just to do the water pump where yeah. like on my, Mustang, I can have the water pump out in 20 minutes. Right. In <laughs> most crazy. in most of the older cars, uh, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, not the DeLorean. So, well, that, okay, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, so you, you turned the wrench on the car yourself and did some did some work yeah, on it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I did to it. I uh, Front end lowered? Or? Uh, no, I didn't do that. I was, gonna, I was planning to do that at some point. That was just hard to get over the price tag for those. Yeah, the suspension. Springs. And I want to do the shocks, too. Yeah, it's pretty pricey. I was like, man. So I would always kind of push it off. And you got to remember, too, I was in the Army, which I wasn't Mr. Moneybags, and then I was <laughs> right. a student. Like, I was in college. I was The car was kind of just in flux, I guess. Right. And I, I just would try yeah. to keep it clean. I'd keep it registered. I'd try to keep it running, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm, sounds extra. like more than half the time you had the car, you were military or student. So yeah, both of those kind of equal no money. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah, not, not particularly tons of money coming. Yeah, so. Yeah. But it was, you know, I, I kind of liked it the way it was, too. It was totally original, like, uh, except for the stuff that I had fixed. And so pretty much, I mean, the, the steering wheel, the I think the seats had been redone, but I'm not sure. I'd never really found a receipt or anything for that. But yeah. you know, but other than that, it was just a survivor, and I loved it. I loved that about it. <laughs> yeah. Prior to a- actually buying it, had you ever been in a DeLorean before? No. So it was the second one I'd ever seen. And it was kind of funny because it was the first time I'd ever heard one run, and I guess it was misfiring. It had a, uh, they ended up, I took it into the DeLorean Northwest, and they found that it there was a spark plug that was, you know, faulty and grounding or something. And so it wasn't running right, but I didn't know that. So I was, like, driving it around, like, it seems like it's not running right, but I've never heard one run, so I don't know <laughs> what's right and what's wrong. So I finally took it in. They're like, nope, it's misfiring pretty good. I'm like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I always thought with that weird exhaust, how it runs around the front. I always thought maybe that's what gave it like a study sound, kind of like a Subaru or something. I'd never heard one run, so it was just kind of. In the time after military and during or after school, did you how far? What's the furthest you drove it? Where did where all did you go? It's actually made the drive from Tacoma all the way to 
Davis, Sacramento. Like I drove it the 700 miles. I did that twice, actually. Cool. That was a good little trip. And I, I always was kind of worried, though, because it still had the original fuel pump lines or uh, just the fuel distributor the fuel lines. lines. Yeah. Yeah, fuel lines. I was always, and I'd heard the horror stories about <laughs> catching fire. So I was like, start, I was really like, I was about to put those on order here. Like, in the next, <laughs> the, this summer, it was like slated for this summer to really change those because i had pulled them apart when i did the water pump and i was like this isn't too hard i could do this wow that's lucky the fact that you pulled them off during that during that work and you didn't have any problems i think that seems kind of lucky maybe not i'm not a i'm not a mechanic or a professional car guy but it seems like the stories that i've read or heard has been when when somebody has been messing with the fuel lines is when they end up cracking and leaking and then catching fire Mm mm-hmm yeah, and I, like I, I'm not sure that they're the original, but they just seemed original because they they were plastic. They weren't the braided ones, so oh. I, I assume though so they may have been replaced. I don't, I'm not sure. You I, know, like, I'm sure they're original. Prior that, to me. I don't think yeah, anybody so. replaced those, you know, ten, twenty, thirty years ago just because. Yeah, just because. So yeah, and uh, and then Reno to Reno to Davis, you've done a few times. Or? Yeah, I did that a bunch. Because uh, uh, was it? I drove it up here one time for hot August nights, and I like parked it right next to it because they won't let you in the show because the car's too new, I guess. Oh, they're they're one of those like, like yeah. you have to be seventy four or older. I think right. it's seventy nine and older now, but it's uh, we were almost there. <laughs> but yeah, so I know I keep hitting that here in Southern California. We yeah. there's a lot of car shows down here all the time, and every now and then I find one that's kind of close by or one that I want to go do, and then I look and it's like yeah, seventy nine or older. I'm like, come on. I don't bother. Yeah. I think maybe if I contact them, they'll say sure. But then, then also the DeLorean just does not. Those old, you know, fifty, sixty, seventies cars are beautiful. So is the DeLorean, mm-hmm. but it's a, it's so different. You know, it's like eh, I don't want. Yeah. I don't want. It doesn't. Wouldn't fit in at all. So. I, well, yeah, and I can remember actually one time I called. Uh, there was another show that I really wanted to be a part of, and it was going to be in town, and I had the car there. And, I was like, I called him. I was like, so what, would it be possible for me to come in even though I'm a little too old and, or too new? And the the woman on the phone was pretty adamant, no. And I'm like, so if I have my 79 Junker Oldsmobile, I could go in, but I can't bring my 25,000-mile DeLorean at yeah. one car show. It's like, no. And I'm like, all right, whatever then. Yeah. So the ageist. Ageist. <laughs> it's getting to be old enough now, though, that I think they're going to start being accepted as classics. So Yeah. Well, technically uh, anything over 30, right? But – it's yeah, that's that... what I think. But you know, the people are kind of set where it's not a classic unless it's sixties, seventies, or right, right. You know, so it's, the eighties are still kind of. I was in high school in the eighties. Like that's not classic. And now <laughs> it's starting to get to where. Right. No, right. that's classic, dude. You're old. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I mean, it sounds like you you did have good fun with the car. You definitely enjoyed it. And mm-hmm. this next part is. If it's okay, I'm going to start because this is all I know. I I talked to you for mm-hmm. two minutes on the phone, but prior to that, mm-hmm. I, I want to share this because personally, I think coincidences are crazy. So Yeah, it was a pretty crazy story, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I remember seeing on social media DeLorean stolen, and like a bunch of people were like, what? That's crazy. And at first, I thought it was somebody stole the car, but it turned out that they stole your whole pickup truck with the flatbed that was towing the DeLorean. And I'm like, okay, that sucks. This is crazy. And yeah. I didn't know, I don't know you. I didn't know what the story was. Well, it went around and that was kind of the end of it. It was up in Martinez in Northern California. And I'm going to say it was what, two weeks later, nine o'clock at night, I'm sitting in a movie theater just as the movie begins is starting. And my phone starts buzzing and I, and it's buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. And I look at it and there's a bunch of pictures that an unknown number is sending to me. And and, and the movie is not quite started yet, and so I look at it, and I'm like, what is this? And I'm looking closer, and I'm like, well, that looks like a DeLorean, but it is a pile of metal. Like, I can't quite figure out what I'm looking at. But the movie starts, and I'm like, okay, I'll look at it afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know who this is from either, right? So I put it back in my pocket, watch the movie. I get home, and I start looking at the pictures, and I'm like, holy crap. The last message that the person sent me that I hadn't seen at the beginning of the, of the movie this was a girl that I went to high school with. I'm 43 now, so we're talking 20 plus years ago. I I have seen her one time 10 years ago in Reno, by the way. Oh, wow. She lives in Reno, which I didn't know you lived in Reno, so that's even crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw her in Reno. I lived in Reno for a minute, 
and I connected with her. We were on the high school yearbook staff together. I was a senior. She was a freshman. We didn't go in the same circles except for the yearbook. Haven't talked to her in ages, but we've been friends on Facebook for a long time. So it turns out she's the one sending me these pictures. And I cannot figure out. She works at an art museum. She's an artist type person, business person, not a car person. So I do not understand why she's sending these to me. So the next day I, I contact her. I'm like, what is the deal with this? Uh, this is crazy. Turns out her husband is a car guy who I didn't, I didn't know her before she got married or after she got married. Her husband's a car guy and her cousin is also a car guy. So her husband and cousin were talking one night about car or that night about cars. And her cousin works for the, one of the water reclamation district guys that drives around in a pickup truck to make sure that the, the water systems for all the farmers are working or whatever. And he comes across this car because he's a car guy, but he doesn't quite know what it is. He sends it to my friend's husband. And uh, my friend ends up, she says, well, I happen to be looking at his phone when they came through and said, wow, that looks like a DeLorean. I know someone that has a DeLorean. Wow. So like you, you look at all the possibilities of how that came together that then she takes them and sends them to me. And I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. That car... And, and I know we'll get into it, but where it was found is literally middle of nowhere. It's not on the side of a road. It's not anywhere obvious. This is in the middle of farmland. And I'm like, that car could have sat there for months or years as just a, some pile of junk that nobody paid attention to. But the fact that this guy drove by it the next day, and it, he, she told me he said that it was still smoking when he got there. I'm just yeah. like, that is a one in a million chance. So... I took the pictures, I posted them on social media, and I said, hey, I don't remember whose car was stolen, but you know, it's really unlikely. This is not a car that was somebody pulled off the side of the road and it caught fire. Um, you know, There's mm -hmm. something going on. And then you know, a bunch of whirlwind, a lot of people posting, commenting, and then you comment and say, yeah, please call me. Or I gave my number. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, because I was trying to find out where it was. I wanted to go see it. Right. So, so then, yeah. so then that's when I called you and I, I could still tell you, I mean, this was that the next day and you're still distraught. And I felt kind yeah. of weird cause I'm, you know, I'm blubbering to you and you're, you're just like, yeah, I don't care. Just give me some information. And then I didn't want to get my friend's cousin in trouble because technically probably, I don't even know to this day what the, all the story is. So I'm hoping that you have more of that information. So basically the, that's the mm -hmm. end of my story is, I posted the pictures, I connected with you, I sent you my friend's contact information, and then I've not heard or seen anything since. So please tell us yeah. all uh, the whole thing. And obviously uh, the pictures are out there, but I'm gonna put, if, as long as you don't mind, I'm gonna put the pictures, yeah. those pictures and any others that you're willing to share onto this episode and on DeLorean directory so people can find them. Yeah, I can send you more pictures. I got, I had to group them all together for insurance, but. Yeah, totally. Okay. And and so my whole little plan was for that weekend. This is, I believe, Memorial Day weekend. I was going to drive to Martinez, which I have a friend from college lives out there. He works at the refinery out there. And so I was going to go out there and he's like, well, you know, it, it's going to be tough to find somewhere to park that because, you know, it's a big, giant, full-size truck with a big, giant 25-foot trailer with a DeLorean on it. And so I was about 60 foot long by the time all said done. <laughs> So he's like, oh, we can go park it down at the marina. It's right there. You pay a couple bucks and you can leave it there. And they got cameras. And it's like an RV parking lot where there's people sleeping in their RVs right there, you know, because they're going to go fishing in the morning kind of thing. And so I was like, okay, that sounds fine. Like, no big deal. Like, who's going to mess with this car? It's only going to be there for 24 hours. Right. Like, and then I'm going to head on out to Dixon, do the car show, and uh, and head home. But so I get there. I park the car. That was at like 11 o'clock at night on the Friday or whatever. And then Saturday I went and checked on it in the morning and then I checked on it at night. And then I went to go pick it up Sunday morning at, I was there at 6 a.m., 6.30. It was gone. I could, no sign of a break-in. It was like, uh, I dream of Jeannie just flicked her eyes and it was gone, you know? And so there was no glass. There was no anything sign of breaking at all. And, yeah. you know, though I called the police instantly. They come out and, I told him all about it, and the guy sits there, and he's just kind of just shaking his head. He's like, man, that stinks. He's like, those F-250s are the easiest car to steal, like, period. Really? He's like, the guy who stole your truck looks like he was – because 
he told me this. He's like, it, it probably looked like he was getting in his own truck. That's how easy it is to break into. Wow. Because all you got to do is take a screwdriver and the lock will just break. It doesn't even fight. Yeah. Jeez. And so he opens the door and then he's like, either with the pair of pliers or even the same screwdriver he just used if he's strong enough, Pop started the, the truck right up and drove yeah. off. Yeah, just drove off. Wow. So I didn't know that about F-250s. So for your audience, if you have an F-250 from the early 2000s, early, you know, late 90s, it's uh, the easiest car to steal, I guess, <laughs> easier than a Honda, like or anything. <laughs> so, but then, so I had hoped the uh, the police officer was pretty out. He's like, oh, I don't know about the truck, but you'll probably get back to DeLorean because they won't have anything to do with it. Like they'll just leave it somewhere. Right. And I'm just like hopeful. Okay, I'm hopeful. And I put that post out on the online. It got about eleven, twelve hundred shares. I was sure of the same thing. You know, this is it's like stealing. Yeah. You know, a rare painting. There's no, you can't sell it. No, you can't post it anywhere because people are going to know. Yeah. And I was almost sure that that was what was going to, and I was, I was actually also going to take that time to really thank everybody who shared it, got the word out. It ended up being on the news in the Bay area because of the Facebook postings and everybody sharing it. It got so popular that the the local news took it and ran with it. My buddy who was in Martinez sent me the video. He's like, dude, look, you're on the news. Oh, wow. It was like a real reaction. And I I think that might've played into part of, the yes it, holy cow. events is it might have panicked whoever yep. had the car like oh my gosh we're going to jail yep and so i i was actually trying to take my mind off stuff so i was actually out golfing that day you called me i believe and uh or i saw the pictures was this like two weeks in between I, I it was pretty recent right after the theft i i i think so yeah it, it was a couple of weeks after maybe just a week yeah it wasn't it a long time yeah, it had not yeah. been a long time. It was a pretty quick turnaround. And so when you contact, I I got in contact with you after we exchanged on Facebook, and you told me where it was, and and then uh, I contacted you. You were nice enough to give me the information of the other person. They were talking to me a little bit, and they told me where it was at about. And then what did what did he say when you talked to him? Because this is the guy that found it, right? That took the pictures. Yeah, well, I, I actually don't think I ever, ever talked to that person. I think I just talked to your friend. Oh, from high school it. and she okay. was relaying with him and she's like my cousin says this that and it's out here got that going and i i was like i need to go find it i need to go find this thing i need to really see if it's mine or not because i was at this point pretty terrified like when i posted the pictures i was like 99 percent sure it was your car because of exactly that yeah. first of all if somebody had had a car fire and pull, they'd pull off the side of the road they wouldn't dump it in the middle of nowhere and yeah. the pictures uh, just because I, I want to help reiterate, if you guys listening haven't seen these photos, go look because there is nothing left of this car. It looks like they took all the body panels off of the off of the fiberglass underbody and then arranged them in the same position as a DeLorean and left. Like it doesn't look like there's any fiberglass left. The engine block is is melted. Um, there is not much of this car left. There's no. Pla- in fact, I didn't. I couldn't even see the rims. Were the rims there? No, they were gone. And uh, looking at it, the transmission, the, the, the only thing that was left of the transmission, you could see like the input shaft and the gears and the output shaft, like the bell housing and the, the whole case was aluminum and it all just, that's how hot it was. It just melted. And then the, uh, the cylinder heads and the intake was all melted into itself. Yeah. And, like the iron block didn't melt, but like all of the, the aluminum pieces had been really badly melted. And it was, it must have been an inferno. And then, the police were even talking about there was a wildfire around the bend and they were like, maybe this is what started it. You know, <laughs> it was a big blaze and it looked like it had been put out by somebody too. Cause there was water like flooded behind it. And then also kind of fl- spilling out into the orchard, but only like in two rows, like right next to where the car was. Hmm. So I don't know if somebody was out there and, you know, put it out or found it and put it out like a farmer or something I mean, out there. S- speculating. Yeah. I could imagine that if I was the bad guy and I wanted to get rid of any fingerprints or what have you, take it out there. Mm-hmm. It looked like there was more than just gasoline. I mean, they must've put something on uh-huh. there, cook that thing. And then when they left and what I thought about was, I don't care if it's the middle of the night, that thing, again, looking at the photos, this thing must've been, like you said, an inferno. So between the smoke yeah. and the fire, somebody must've seen it. And then, yeah, like you said, I mean, if a farmer saw it, he would have gone out there to hose it off and then went, oh, just somebody that stole a car. Great. We'll deal with it later. They didn't realize they wouldn't realize it was a DeLorean. Yeah. No. You send your friend out there or you went out by yourself. You went on your own. Well, so I called him and he's like, I can't be out there. This was on like 
Sunday, right, when you we were talking, and I was like, I need to go, like, ASAP. I was like, hey, man, can you go out there and see the one the person who lived there, obviously? And he's like, no, I can't go till Thursday. I'm like, that's not okay. So I actually <laughs> asked my boss if I could just take the day. I was like, can I just go look and find it? Like, I have to go. And uh, my girlfriend and I just, we, we had these coordinates. So I was like, I think I know it, it looks exactly like where it would be. Like, the terrain looks exactly like it does in the photos. Like, let's go check it out. And drove from Reno all the way to Tracy, California, which was about a four-hour drive. And uh, so it was sitting right where they left it. And it, it was pretty tragic, you know. It is, it was, you had posted a, a couple of pictures. Um, so it looks like the police were there with you. Yeah, so I, I ended up calling the police as soon as I... You know, I looked around it, kind of tried to find some proof that it was like the like the VIN tags and everything or something that would. Oh, yeah. That was all melted. But like as soon as I saw that that stage one DMC yep. Houston exhaust, I was like, that's my car. Dude. I've never seen one of those on another car. Right. And it was, had the, the different muffler because they were switching over to do a stage three. And so the muffler had changed that year. And I was like, man, I just know this is mine. <laughs> like, yep. It has to be. And then so. CHP came out with you. Yeah. Well, no, they they ended up meeting me there because I called them once I found it. Oh, okay. And I was like, I found my car. And they were like, really? <laughs> and so, they, yeah, they, they, I met them out on the, the main road. And, uh, yeah, I was going to kind of elaborate on where it was. It's, I mean, it wasn't just on the side of the road. It was – you had to turn on this dirt road and go about a half mile down it, like a really good ways to find it. Like somebody had really tried to hide this. Yeah. So it was, well, it was in an orchard. It was in a, a farming area. Yeah, and it, but like I'm saying, like it wasn't near the road. It was yeah. way back in there. Right. So, right. yeah, it's pretty incredible that it was found. <laughs> so, so yeah. So at that point, the cops are, I'm guessing they're thinking, okay, there's no VIN numbers, there's no way, you know, and you explain the muffler and all that stuff, and then DeLoreans mm-hmm. don't get stolen. So you know it's your car. What's going through your mind at that point? You know, I mean— your, I'm sure your heart is just sunk the second you see that muffler and you know that it's your car. Yeah. What's What's next? What comes after that? Well, so the way I remember it, so my my girlfriend, her, bless her heart, she came with me. She dropped what she was doing to come with me, and uh, she really helped me out. Like I, I remember just kind of turning to her, and she was just kind of helping me out, like go through all this stuff. And it was kind of strange. Like I felt like I had closure at least, like knowing where the car was, and I got to touch it one last time. Right. <laughs> Seeing those pictures, yeah. I'm like, look, it sucks that it's gone, but never knowing, like, I know this is just a car. I have I have a DeLorean, too, so it's just a car. It's not a child. Yeah. And you said it, closure. Knowing what happened to the car is far better than never seeing it again or find, you know, yeah. the community would have been forever looking for a car that had the, the VIN plates taken off and somebody trying to sell it or who knows what, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and, and I think that was a big one is, like, nobody got hurt. It was, nothing, it was just kind of a, a material object at the end of the day. Yep. Still, you know, I and I guess it was kind of a big deal to me that I got to kind of say goodbye to it, you know, like yeah. talk to it, kind of touch it. When I, sure. Uh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I get it. You have a real short video of towing the wreckage yeah. up onto a flatbed. Yeah, and it's just getting dragged. Like, it's scratching and scraping all the way up, yeah. And and I know I've already said it, but I'm telling you guys, if you haven't seen the pictures, it is shocking. You just you can't even imagine that that's what, that this was a DeLorean, except for owners know what it looks like. Yeah. So you got it up on the flatbed. I'm guessing did you sell it for scrap or there was nothing usable at all? Well, so I had insurance, so the insurance uh, had it towed to wherever they were taking it. Did they have any issue with the fact that there was no VIN numbers? Well, it's kind of funny. So when I was there with the, the CHP and I was explaining to them how, you know, DeLoreans only have VIN numbers in two spots, he's like, there's secret, there's secret VIN numbers. We'll find it. And I'm like, no, you're not. Like, I know this. Like, you're not going to find anything. And he's like, oh, no, we'll find it. And I'm like, okay, man. And so they were confident that they would find a VIN. And I'm just like, no. But I, I, at the end of the day, I think that after the fact, the insurance adjuster and the police, like, kind of, they were like, yeah, this is the car. Like, there's no other yeah. DeLoreans. And I, I kept thinking, like, if, if somebody else had their car on fire, the community is so tight-knit, like, yeah, it would have been all over the place. Like, it would have been, that's my car. I know, I would, you know, <laughs> when, when nobody came forward, it was like, oh, no. Yeah, of course. That's what, that's the whole thing. Like, we've seen when other cars catch fire, we see the photos, yeah. we hear the story, and then this, this DeLorean that caught fire, there's nothing on the internet about it? Yeah. Yeah. So... Your insurance company settled. It, it was not an argument or a fight. They said, yeah, we agree and paid you off. 
Well, no, actually, so the plot thickens. Uh, <laughs> uh, when they first initially did the assessment, I talked to the adjuster and I told her, like, hey, look, this was not just a run-of-the-mill DeLorean. It was a car show winner. It had 25,000 miles. And she was all, okay, we'll, we'll take that into consideration. And, and then when I get the initial offer for the settlement agreement, it was like $15,000. I'm like, you can't even buy a DeLorean that runs for $15,000. <laughs> So I had to go through and prove the mileage, which was really fortunate that in Nevada, you can register the car as a classic vehicle and you don't have to do emissions, but you have to certify the odometer every year you do it. So I I have all these records of the odometer as it's going up and up and up every year. So I was able to prove that and sent them all these pictures from the car shows and the award, the picture of the, the plaque that I have. Right. And they, they readjusted it up. uh, Good. Around, it, it, I ended up getting, I don't know if you care to know, but it was around 40000 for the good settlement after all of a sudden done. So that's good for us DeLorean owners that they would actually value it up there. Well, who was, who was your insurance company? That was uh, USAA, the military service members. Yeah. You have to be a prior service member or have a family member or something, you know. Right, so, right. It's like a members only thing. Yep. But yeah, so it, it definitely worked out, but... <laughs> There's even more to it because when I bought the car back in 2008, I took the the title that I got from the previous owner and all the information, and I took it in and had it what I thought was titled, but they never sent me the title. They're like, well, when you have a lien holder, you don't receive the title until you pay off the loan. Paid off the loan. I got a notice from USA. This was about five or six years ago. We, we never have the title. You need to contact whoever oh. your state is to figure it out. I didn't really care because I'm not selling the car. This is my coffin. Like, right. <laughs> So I never really followed up on it. And then this all happened. So I'm trying to get this title thing worked out to this day. I'm right now still working on this title. I haven't received the settlement yet. And it's kind of just dragging it out and dragging it out. And what state of Washington is adamant that, well, we never issued a title. Therefore we can't reissue a title that wasn't ever issued. Like, <sighs> so oh, <laughs> man, it's been kind of a, an amazing tale. Any chance you can, I mean, it's military. You probably tracked down the, the guy you bought it from, right? Uh, well, the USA people won't disclose him. I tried to find him on social media, but you bought it from him though, right? Who? The the first owner of the car or the guy you bought. I bought it from him. Yeah. But that was 10 years ago and I haven't really kept in touch with him and I didn't really know how to find him. So I'm, I'm working it through. I'm I'm thinking I got one thing I can do with Nevada maybe. So I'm going to see about that, but it's been kind of a process. First, it was getting the settlement amount correct. Yeah, and then it, now it's become just getting the title so I can receive the settlement that we've been, which is kind of crazy because I don't blame the insurance company. You know, this is due diligence. Yeah. it's your fault for yeah. not having that taken care of. But you know, you'll get it worked out. It just sucks that it's such a you have to go through the process. It has, yeah, and, and it, it, yeah. So I'm just keep working on it. You know? <laughs> wow. But yeah, so that's like pretty much the whole tale. There you go. <laughs> wow. I guess the the question is when the settlement comes whether it's with that money or later, do you ever think you're going to buy another DeLorean? Uh, well, at least not now. I Maybe someday. Yeah. I'm always going to be a DeLorean guy, but I think uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try to save that to buy a house and to kind of start my family, you know, so. Good. She died for a, a cause. You know? <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, wow. That's where I'm at with it. Yeah, but, yeah. Sincerely, amazing story, Mike. Yeah. I highly doubt there will ever be another story like that. Yeah, right. I can see in the future DeLoreans getting stolen and just totally disappeared or going to who knows where, Saudi Arabia, and they're, that's it. They're just yeah. gone. But, yeah, to have one that has this kind of, you know, the damage. I've referenced it all the time as the melted DeLorean because tell me if you disagree, yeah. but that's what it is. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It just – it disin- it didn't even melt. It disintegrated. Like there was no – GRP left. There yeah. was no wheel. There was no transmission. Yeah. There were no seats. It's just gone. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, for a stainless steel body, that was not yeah. just somebody dumping a bunch of gasoline in because the car would burn itself out if it was just gasoline, I think. Yeah. I, what do I know? But I feel like they mm-hmm. had to do some. Either they had to fill the thing with gasoline or they put something else in there to make the thing burn that way. Yeah, I, I can only... Speculate, yeah. We've seen the pictures of burned DeLoreans, you know, and catches fire and you can see what's left of it. But cars that have been in garages during house fires and the car catches fire, 
it's still intact. This thing, there's just nothing left. Yeah. So it's crazy. I almost kind of felt like maybe the the fiberglass is really flammable at a certain temperature. It just kind of starts oh. going crazy or something. You know, maybe I don't know. That's a good point. Like. Yeah, maybe there's the like they got the fire hot enough that it started this like kind of chain reaction with the all the plastics just started burning like yeah you know, like petroleum. I don't... That actually makes a lot of sense. You're right because yeah, it's all just petroleum. Wow. Yeah, so, I don't know. We'll never know. It hasn't been that long since this happened, and trust me, yeah. I I wanted to hear the story. You know, a week later or two Day weeks one. later. Yeah, but. I'm like, no, I know that you're going through a grieving period. I don't care if you have a DeLorean for six months or, or 15 years. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to overwhelm you by just being one more person going, hey, what, man, what happened, man? What happened, man? Oh, yeah. And, and, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy that you let me tell my story, and hopefully people can hear it. And I guess, like I said, the big takeaway is go out there, drive it, enjoy your car every day, every day that you can. Don't let it sit in the garage and then get stolen. <laughs> I don't know. There have been a number of cars lost in house fires, and I wonder the same yeah. thing, if those people enjoyed their cars before they were gone. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. It's kind of actually changed my life in that I kind of realized, like, nothing is forever. Enjoy it now. You know, don't wait. Don't hope uh, it will be worth so much if I just don't drive it. Use it, man. Go out there and drive it. <laughs> so That's where I'm at. I, so. Awesome. I, honestly, I don't think there's, there's no way better to close than that, is yeah. drive the car, enjoy it. Because you don't know when it's not going to be there. Yeah. Go to the events, make friends, do stuff. Yeah, that's what I didn't do. I feel like I didn't do it as good as I could have. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. Mike, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. And to everybody out there listening, get out there, join your local DeLorean clubs and groups. Go to the events. Help set up events. If there's nothing in your area, find out where you can take your car to share it with people and, uh, and, and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. As always, thanks everybody for listening. Drive safe. Uh, check out DeloreanDirector.com, DeloreanTalk.com, and uh, post your comments, ideas, and questions, and uh, we'll see you on the road.